What's up, my name is Technobo here for Troubleshoot and welcome to a multi-part series. All of these videos in the series are stuck together in one complete full guide, which you'll find linked in the description down below, as well as the other episodes that I've split it up into. This whole mini series shows you how to install and set up key paths for Windows and Android, get them to sync together using SyncThing, as well as set up autofill on your Android phone and your desktop using Chrome, Firefox, and other browsers. If you're interested, check the description down below. This video in particular covers installing, setting up, and using KeyPass on Windows. To begin, we'll be downloading KeyPass XC for Windows, Mac, and Linux. I'll be downloading the MSI installer 64-bit as I'm on a 64-bit PC. There is, of course, a portable option as well. I'll open up the MSI installer and we'll follow through with the installation. So next, after reading through GNU GPL2, accept. Next, choose an install location. I'll make a shortcut on my desktop and auto start it with my computer. Next, and finally install. When prompted for admin, I'll click yes, leave launch as on, and then click finish. Awesome, do I wanna check for updates? Yes, I do. All we need to do is create a new database. And of course, we can also import from KeyPass, one password, and from a CSV file. I've got a CSV file that I exported from my previous online password manager. So I'll go ahead and import it now. So creating a database will just ask you for a name, a description, and later on a password. So I'll show you that now. The interesting thing about this program is the decryption time over here. Making this higher requires more compute power from your computer and makes it less likely for someone to crack into by trying thousands of different passwords. The higher this number, pretty much the safer the folder is. You can also choose a format down here, but I'll leave it as four. Inside of the advanced options section, you can change the encryption algorithm, key derivation function, transform rounds, memory usage, parallelism, and more. So this is, as I mentioned, advanced, so you might wanna leave it as simple. After setting it to something you like, continue, and of course, enter a master password, as well as maybe additional protection if you'd like, with a key file, a YubiKey challenge, etc., etc. But for now, I'll just be importing from a CSV. So I'll go ahead and give it a name, leave it as passwords, set a decryption time, and for now I think I'll leave everything as simple default. Then I'll go ahead and enter a strong master password. Make sure that this is very strong. Why? Well, it's managing all the rest of your passwords. If you have one password that's strong, it should be this one. After entering my long password twice, I'll leave extra protection for now. I do want to get a UBG at some stage, and I'll click done. After doing so, you'll be prompted with where you'd like to save this. I would highly recommend you put this in somewhere like say OneDrive or another folder that's synced with the cloud on your computer as you should always keep another backup of this somewhere else in case your current PC gets destroyed, water damage, anything like that. For now, I'll save it in my projects folder, which is something that's backed up and of course encrypted. So I'll save it here. And because I'm importing something, you'll see something like this. I'm importing 579 rows, so 579 accounts. How exactly it's added is by setting things here, such as the group notes title TOTP, which is something interesting. It's something to do with two-factor authentication and two-factor authenticator codes, apparently. That's pretty cool, though I don't have this. Username, icon, password, last modified, URL, and date created if present. So of course, you'll only see this if you're importing from a different database. I'll have to look at the headers and figure out which column is which. So for me, URL is column one, username is column two, password is column three, title is column six, group is column seven, and that's about it. Last modified, not present. I'll change the notes to not present, TOTP, not present, icon, not present, created, not present, as I'm only really importing these. So with everything set up properly, you may want to check the options on the right-hand side to change how things are encoded. For me, this should be fine. Fields are separated by a comma for me instead of a semicolon. There are no comments. So we'll just leave it as this and see what happens. And then we have it. It's imported all of my passwords. I'll make it a bit bigger so we can see some more here. There we go. Now, of course, you can click on something to get some info about it. Right click to get some options such as copy username, password, copying a different attribute, TOTP, which you can set up here. Auto type, which is basically their autofill, which seems to work in a pretty interesting way. If I go ahead and open up a notepad file, such as a website, if I alt tab into key pass or simply tab into it directly and I ask it to autofill, it'll minimize itself, go to the last program I had selected and automatically fill in the username, press tab, then the password. Works pretty well. On top of this, we can edit, clone, delete, new entry, open URL and download favicon, which will visit the website in question and look for the image. By doing so and clicking close, you can see it populates with an image over here. I can control A, right click, 
and download Favicon once again, where it'll run through everything on the list, downloading icons for everything. Of course, doing 500 entries, the program gets a little bit confused, but it should download all of them in just a moment. There we go, now that it's populated everything, we did out the duplicates, it'll run through everything and download icons for all of the individual websites. After it finishes, I'll click close, though I think it's getting a bit stuck because one of the domains is written as just HTTP, nothing more. Anyway, I'll click close and everything should be saved so far. Having a quick scroll through, there's thousands of icons and things are working pretty well. Though of course, websites that don't exist anymore and sites alike are missing the icon on the left hand side. And on top of that, some websites just don't let you download the fab icon, so you could add it manually if you wanted. Anyways, at this point, I'm pretty much happy. Now that we've installed this program and got it working properly, we need to move on to the next thing. Though, just before we do, I'll navigate across to the folder where the database is stored. And as you can see, there's a KDBX file here. This is the database that stores every password of yours. So do keep this safe. Keep it backed up, multiple copies of it, and heck, even throw it on a CD so you can keep a physical copy as well. Now that we've done that, let's move on. Something that I didn't cover in that complete guide is how to add accounts to this if you weren't exactly importing from a CSV or another program. Well, if you click the plus button up here, you can add accounts. You can give it a title, which shows under this section here, followed by a username, URL, notes, etc. So username, password, URL, notes. You can also set expiry dates if you'd like accounts to vanish after a certain amount of time. But for now, you probably won't need to do that. You usually enter something like Google for the title, then probably an email here. So maybe let's say technobo at testmail.com. Then my password can be ASDF1234, nice and secure. The URL over here is very important. You should have it as just the base domain, say HTTPS google.com and nothing more after it. If you have a whole bunch of stuff here, odds are that it may not pick this up when you're on the right website, depending on your settings. Rather keep it right down to the base domain. And it especially matters if you have, say, mail.google.com. Usually your accounts won't show on google.com then. That is a little side note to know. And that's an issue with most password managers, though you can customize this later. Notes down here I've never really used, but you can write information about accounts, etc. The advanced section over here allows you to do some pretty interesting things. We can add additional attributes, give them a name and give them a value. There are a very limited amount of reasons why you'd want to do this, but I have a couple of test attributes here. You can also add attachments to the account to keep files and the rest attached to it, which is pretty interesting. You can exclude them from database reports, set different foreground and background colors as well for them inside of the database list. You can set a custom icon here or use one of the existing ones from your computer and also add a custom icon that you can import from your computer as a BMP, CUR, GIF, icon, ICO, etc, etc. Just a whole bunch of image file types. The auto type section over here allows you to disable auto type if you'd like or add custom type sequences in order to get it to write out in certain ways. Usually it's username, tab, password. And if you click the question mark here, it'll take you across to a guide on what exactly you need to do. As I mentioned, username, tab, password, enter. You can find much more information here, such as delays, different keys, etc., etc. Really cool. You can also limit it to only work in certain windows, etc., etc., using the options down here. Browser integration is another interesting one, though you won't really be doing anything here unless you'd like it to work on additional URLs. So let's say this one is for google.com. You can go down here to browser integration, add URLs, and add, say, mail.google.com. I'm not too sure if this wouldn't work in the first place, but if it didn't, I could even add, say, youtube.com, for example. That way, this Google account will work when I go to YouTube and it will be suggested there. There are some other advanced options up here. Down under properties, we can find some extra info on this, though once again, you won't really mess around with this. After hitting OK, it'll add it to our list and we have it right over here. If we right click at the very top, we can add these other columns. So say attachments, size, etc., etc. But once again, you won't really be using those at all. If we head across to advanced, you can see our other attributes down here and the auto type section here shows us the sequence that we had selected previously or one that we may have edited. To move these into groups, I'm obviously in the none group over here. You can simply grab it and drag and drop it into any of the other groups that you'd like. You can reorganize any of them that way. When you right click and delete something, it'll really just move it down to the recycle bin here. 
In here, you can right click it once again and click delete entry where it will be permanently deleted. Otherwise, it'll stay in your recycle bin, I think maybe forever, or it may expire after some time. If you get confused, simply hover over any of the icons up here, and if you don't move your mouse off the icon for long enough, it'll show you exactly what it does, such as the password generator, the option to lock and unlock databases, which basically just logs you out. We also have the other buttons up here, the same ones that we do in this right-click menu. I'll be going through this two-factor authentication in a different video, linked down below once again, as I feel it's a little bit too advanced to add to this video, it'll drag it on far too long. But anyways, that's about it for this video. Thank you once again for watching. This is a part of a longer series. So if you'd like to see more, including mobile integration, browser integration, and the rest, check the description down below. Thank you for watching. My name's been Technobi here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.